The video I made about evolution of prey and predators got a lot more attention than I expected. And the comment section was full of very interesting ideas that I really want to try. The main feature I want to implement is to allow prey and predators to see their peers. I wonder what kind of interesting group behavior this can produce. In the rest of the video, I will refer to prey and predators as agents. A much bigger neural network will be required to allow agents to see more than just one kind of object. This implies that the learning phase will be much longer. When using evolutionary approach, it's also better to have a lot of agents to explore the problem space more efficiently. This means that if I want to have interesting results, I will need a much bigger simulation, both in terms of map size and agents count. I will increase the map size from 128 units to 512, and the maximum number of agents from 1000 to 16000. In short, scale every metric by 16. No big deal. I just have to change three lines of code. What could go wrong? Sadly, performance are very disappointing, with more than half a second per frame. This is because when I experiment with new things, my priority is to have something that works and behaves correctly. Optimizing right away can introduce bugs that aren't easy to spot when you don't really know what to expect. That's why the first implementation is reliable, but slow. Now that I have my ground truth, I can safely optimize my code and hope it will handle the scale of the new simulation. In the first version of my simulation, I used a straightforward object-oriented approach, where agents had several attributes stored directly in their class. It's quite intuitive to proceed like that, but it has a major drawback. As more and more attributes are added into the class, its size quickly becomes huge. In the simulation, there will be a lot of agents, and at some point I will have to process their attributes to update them. For example, if I want to update all the neural networks of the simulation, I will have to iterate on all the objects access their network, and perform some computations. However, since there are many other attributes, only a small proportion of the memory I am iterating on is really used, resulting in a lot of useless data being loaded by the CPU, polluting the cache, and degrading performance. A more efficient strategy is to store all the instances of the attributes in their own containers, and only keep IDs referencing them in the agents class. If we want to update all networks, we only have to iterate on the relevant data, greatly improving cache utilization. Another benefit of this approach is that it allows to perform parallel updates more easily. Using this data-oriented approach led to around 20% performance increase. But we are still far from real-time territory. A big part of the simulation's update time is the execution of neural networks. Maybe there are things to optimize there. A traditional basic neural network consists of layers of virtual neurons, each layer being fully connected with the next one. However, to better suit the evolutionary process, I'm using another architecture, where networks are graphs, allowing more flexibility in the connections. Each node of the graph stores its value, bias, and a list of outgoing connections. A network simply consists of a list of nodes. It seems fine, but what could be improved is the way connections are stored. Currently, the connections attribute is just a pointer to a list containing the actual connections. This means that when we are executing the network and iterating over all nodes, 
we have to jump somewhere else to retrieve its connections, which is not very cache friendly. Ideally, the network should be stored in one block of contiguous memory. In order to do this, instead of storing connections into a separate array outside the network, I move them to the end of the network's container. This is performed for all nodes. The connections attribute is then replaced by the number of connections each node has. This little change had a quite small impact on performance, but reduced memory usage and is very important for later. Neural network change didn't dramatically improve the simulation's frame rate. However, a big performance improvement can be expected from contact detection optimization. In the first video, I used a very naive algorithm to detect contact when predators are eating prey by iterating over the world population for each agent. It was fine when there were only a few hundred of them, but obviously, this didn't scale well. To fix this, I exploited the physics simulation space partitioning to only iterate over close neighborhood and save a lot of time. This optimization had a really huge impact on performance by reducing frame time by a factor of 3. The frame rate is now much better, but still quite low. One more thing that can be done, leveraging all previous optimizations is multithreading. This is something that can be very hard to correctly implement, but fortunately, the data-oriented approach really helps here. Indeed, since the different data are clearly separated and stored in contiguous memory, thread synchronization will be easier to manage. To parallelize my code, I implemented a very simple thread pool library that automatically dispatches tasks to a group of worker threads. After the dispatcher's queue has been filled, it starts assigning tasks to thread. If a thread is done with its task and there is still work to do, the dispatcher directly assigns it a new one. This process is repeated until all tasks are done. This divided frame time by an additional factor of 6, for a total 27 times faster update time over the old implementation. It is certainly possible to improve performance even further, but it will be enough for my next simulation. This is given the fact that I also improved ray casting accuracy and added pierce detection. In the following video, I will present you the hopefully interesting results of this bigger simulation. Thank you very much for watching.